In this series of short videos, we will be introducing you to the Military Aviation Preservation Society, or MAPS, Air Museum, and some of the aircraft and displays that are located at our facility in Green, Ohio. We hope that these presentations enhance your appreciation of history and those who lived it. Man's fascination with flight and a desire to fly has always been with us. A quote attributed to Leonardo da Vinci gives you only one view of this obsession. It reads, once you have tasted flight, you will forever walk the earth with your eyes turned skyward, for there you have been, and there you will always long to return. At MAPS, the history of aviation is more than just airplanes. It is about those who have dreamed of flying, those who ultimately made those dreams a reality, and those that have experienced the freedom of flight. We hope to share that and more with you in these video presentations. We hope to cover the general background of each type of aircraft, as well as the history of the actual airframe that we have here at the museum. In some cases, we have dedicated specific aircraft to local men and women. If this is the case, we will discuss why we decided to dedicate an aircraft to them. In this video, we will be introducing you to the McDonnell Douglas F-4 Phantom II. The McDonnell Douglas F-4 Phantom II was a legendary aircraft used extensively during the Vietnam War. For nearly four decades of service in the U.S. military, the Phantom performed every combat task assigned. It served as the principal air superiority fighter for the United States Air Force, Navy, and Marine Corps, and became important in the ground attack and aerial reconnaissance roles late in the war. The F-4 Phantom II was not the first McDonald design to carry the Phantom name. The McDonald FH-1 Phantom was a twin jet fighter aircraft first flown during World War II for the United States Navy. The Phantom was the first purely jet-powered aircraft to land on an American aircraft carrier and the first jet deployed by the United States Marine Corps. It would establish McDonnell as an important supplier of Navy aircraft. When McDonnell chose to bring the name back with the Mach 2 McDonnell Douglas F-4 Phantom II, it launched what would become a most versatile and widely used Western combat aircraft of the Vietnam War. The McDonnell Douglas F-4 Phantom II was a tandem, two-seat, twin-engine, all-weather, long-range supersonic jet interceptor, fighter, and fighter-bomber originally developed for the United States Navy by McDonnell Aircraft. It first entered service in 1960 with the United States Navy. Proving highly adaptable, it was also adopted by the United States Marine Corps and the United States Air Force and by the mid-1960s had become a major part of their respective air wings. The Phantom is a large fighter with a top speed of over Mach 2.2. It can carry over 18,000 pounds of weapons, including air-to-air -air and air-to-ground missiles, and various guided and unguided bombs. In its air-to-ground role, the F-4 could carry twice the normal bomb load of a World War II B-17 Flying Fortress. In air combat, the Phantom's greatest advantage was its thrust, which permitted a skilled pilot to engage and disengage from the fight at will. However, the massive aircraft, designed to fire radar-guided missiles from beyond visual range, lacked the agility of its Soviet opponents. In 1952, McDonnell Aircraft began internal studies to determine which service branch was most in need of a new aircraft. Led by McDonnell's Chief of Aerodynamics, Dave Lewis, the team found that the U.S. Navy would soon require a new attack aircraft to replace the F-3H Demon. As the designer of the Demon, McDonnell began revising the aircraft in 1953 with a goal of improving performance and capabilities. On September 19, 1953, 
McDonnell approached the United States Navy with a proposal for the revision of the F-3H Demon Naval Fighter, which only saw limited service. The aircraft was to be modular, as it could be fitted with one or two seat noses for different missions. The Navy was sufficiently interested to order a full-scale mock-up of the Super Demon, but felt that the upcoming Grumman XF9F9 and Vought XF8U1 already satisfied the need for a supersonic fighter. The resulting prototype incorporated many of the concepts found in a previous McDonnell design, the F101 Voodoo, including twin engines and a tail structure mounted above and behind the jet exhaust. Like the Voodoo, a second crewman was added to operate the powerful radar. Designers believed that air combat in the next war would overload solo pilots with information. The McDonnell design was therefore reworked into an all-weather fighter bomber with nine hardpoints under the wings in the fuselage for weapons or additional fuel. On October 18, 1954, the company received a letter of intent for two YAH-1 prototypes. Then, on May 26, 1955, four Navy officers arrived at the McDonnell offices and within an hour presented the company with an entirely new set of requirements. Innovations in the new aircraft proposal included an advanced pulse Doppler radar and extensive use of titanium in its airframe. Because the Navy already had the Douglas A-4 Skyhawk for ground attack and the F-8 Crusader for dogfighting, the project now had to fulfill the need for an all-weather fleet defense interceptor. McDonald's earliest concept included interchangeable nose sections to readily convert a standard F-4 into the RF-4B, a camera-equipped reconnaissance aircraft. The aircraft's most photo-friendly asset, however, was speed. In practice, RF-4Bs flew alone and unarmed deep into unfriendly airspace. On July 25, 1955, the Navy ordered two XF-4H-1 test aircraft and five YF-4H-1 pre-production examples. The Phantom made its maiden flight on May 27, 1958 from Lambert Field in St. Louis. On the first flight, a hydraulic problem precluded retraction of the landing gear, but subsequent flights went more smoothly. The XF-4H1 Phantom was in competition with Vought's XF-8U3 Crusader III for the Navy contract. However, the solitary pilot in the Crusader was easily overwhelmed with the workload required to fly the intercept and fire sparrows, which required constant radar illumination from the firing aircraft, while the McDonald prototype had a dedicated radar intercept officer on board. On December 17, 1958, the F-4H was selected by the Navy for production. The aircraft was officially named the Phantom II on July 3, 1959, during a ceremony held at the McDonald plant in St. Louis to celebrate the company's 20th anniversary. Also in 1959, the Phantom began carrier suitability trials with the first complete launch recovery cycle performed on February 15, 1960 on the aircraft carrier USS Independence. While the Phantom was originally designed to meet Navy requirements, the Air Force and Marine Corps soon saw value in the design. The U.S. Air Force evaluated it for close air support, interdiction, and counter-air operations, and in 1962, approved an Air Force version initially designated the F-110A. With the Defense Department's unification of designations on September 18, 1962, the Phantom became the F-4, with the naval version designated the F-4B, and the later Air Force version designated the F-4C. 
Navy Fighter Squadron, or VF-121, the Pacific Fleet Replacement Squadron, was the first unit to receive the Phantom II on December 30, 1960. These first Phantoms were delivered from the McDonnell Aircraft Corporation in St. Louis, Missouri, to the squadron's home at Naval Air Station, or NAS Miramar, California. On July 8, 1961, VF-74, began to transition to the Phantom II at NAS Oceana, Virginia, becoming the first deployable F-4 squadron. The Marine Corps received its first Phantoms in June of 1962. The Black Knights of Marine Fighter Attack Squadron, or VMFA-314, at Marine Corps Air Station El Toro, California, became the first operational Marine F-4B squadron. The Air Force Phantom II, designated the F-4C, made its first flight on May 27, 1963. Production deliveries began in November of that year. The 4453rd Combat Crew Training Wing at MacDill Air Force Base was the first Air Force unit to receive the Phantoms. The first combat unit to receive F-4Cs was the 12th Tactical Fighter Wing in 1964. The F-4 was used extensively during the Vietnam War. It served as the principal air superiority fighter for the United States Air Force, Navy, and Marine Corps, and became important in the ground attack and aerial reconnaissance role late in the war. By the time of the Tonkin Gulf incident on August 2, 1964, 13 of 31 deployable Navy squadrons were armed with Phantoms. F-4Bs from USS Constellation made the first Phantom combat sortie of the Vietnam War on August 5, 1964, flying bomber escort in Operation Pierce Arrow. While primarily serving aboard carriers at the beginning of the conflict, Marine Phantoms from VMFA 531 were assigned to Da Nang Air Base on South Vietnam's northeast coast on May 10, 1965. They were initially assigned to provide air defense for Marine Corps facilities, but soon began close air support missions. VMFA 232, VMFA 314, VMFA 323, and VMFA 542 soon arrived at the airfield at Da Nang. On April 4, 1965, F-4Cs of the 45th Tactical Fighter Squadron, 15th Tactical Fighter Wing, were placed on temporary assignment at Ubon Royal Thai Air Force Base. The 45th was the first F-4 Phantom II unit to arrive in Southeast Asia. In August of 1965, F-4Cs from the 43rd Tactical Fighter Squadron deployed to Clark Air Base in the Philippines and in November became the first fighter squadron assigned to Cam Ranh Air Base, South Vietnam. The F-4's biggest weakness, as it was initially designed, was lack of an internal cannon. For a brief period, doctrine held that turning combat would be impossible at supersonic speeds, and little effort was made to teach pilots air combat maneuvering. In reality, engagements quickly became subsonic. To compound the problem, rules of engagement in Vietnam precluded long-range missile attacks in most instances, as visual identification was normally required. In 1967, the Air Force F-4Cs began carrying external 20mm gun pods, but cockpits were not equipped with lead computing gun sights, virtually assuring a miss in maneuvering flight. The lack of a cannon was finally addressed by adding an internally mounted 20mm M61 Vulcan on the F-4E. By war's end, the U.S. Air Force had lost a total of 528 F-4 and RF-4C Phantoms. When combined with the U.S. Navy and Marine Corps losses of 233 Phantoms, 764 F-4 and RF-4 Phantoms were lost in the Vietnam War. 
although some aircraft were lost to accidents in air-to-air -air combat. A majority of the losses were to surface-to-air missiles and anti-aircraft artillery fire. On January 31, 1972, the 170th Tactical Fighter Squadron of the 183rd Tactical Fighter Group of the Illinois Air National Guard became the first Air National Guard unit to transition to Phantoms. The Air Force Reserve's 93rd Tactical Fighter Squadron of the 915th Tactical Fighter Group received its first Phantom Twos on October 1, 1978 at Homestead Air Force Base in Florida. Phantom II production ended in the United States in October of 1979 after 5,195 had been built including 5,057 by McDonnell Douglas and an additional 138 in Japan by Mitsubishi. Of these, 2,874 went to the U.S. Air Force, 1,264 to the Navy and Marine Corps, and the rest to foreign customers. The last U.S.-built F-4 went to South Korea. By 1987, all Navy F-4s were retired from fleet service in deployable squadrons. On March 25, 1986, an F-4S belonging to VF-151 became the last active duty U.S. Navy Phantom to launch from an aircraft carrier, in this case the USS Midway. On October 18, 1986, an F-4S from VF-202, a Naval Reserve Fighter Squadron, made the last ever Phantom carrier landing while operating aboard USS America. In 1987, the last of the Naval Reserve operated F-4S aircraft were replaced by F-14As. The F-4 continued to equip fighter attack squadrons in both active and reserve Marine Corps units throughout the 1960s, 70s, and 80s, and into the early 1990s. In the early 1980s, these squadrons began to transition to the F-A-18 Hornet, starting with the same squadron that introduced the F-4 to the Marine Corps, VMFA-314. On January 18, 1992, the last Marine Corps Phantom, an F-4S in the Marine Corps Reserve, was retired by VMFA-112 at NAS Dallas, Texas. The F-4 Phantom II remained in use by the United States in the reconnaissance and wild weasel or suppression of enemy air defense roles in the 1991 Gulf War, finally leaving service in 1996. The last Air Force Phantoms, F-4Gs from the 561st Fighter Squadron, were retired on March 26, 1996. The last operational flight of the F-4G wild weasel was from the 190th Fighter Squadron, Idaho Air National Guard, in April of 1996. The F-4 Phantom II was also the only aircraft used by both U.S. flight demonstration teams. The U.S. Air Force Thunderbirds, who flew the F-4E, and the U.S. Navy Blue Angels, flying the F-4J. The last Phantoms in service with the Navy were QF-4N and QF-4S target drones operated by the Naval Air Warfare Center at NAS Point Magoo, California. The F-4C remained in service at the time of the Gulf War with the 160th Tactical Fighter Squadron, 187th Tactical Fighter Group of the Alabama Air National Guard with their last F-4C leaving service in 1994. Following their 90-day deployment, supporting Operation Provide Comfort in December of 1995, the F-4G Phantoms, assigned to the Idaho Air National Guard's 190th Fighter Squadron, were retired to the Aerospace Maintenance and Regeneration Center, otherwise known as the Boneyard, at Davis Monthan Air Force Base in Arizona. The F-4 Phantom II served as the model for the next generation of jet fighter designs that entered service in the 1960s. 
It continued to form a major part of U.S. military air power throughout the 1970s and 1980s, being gradually replaced by more modern aircraft such as the F-15 Eagle and F-16 Fighting Falcon in the U.S. Air Force, the Grumman F-14 Tomcat and the F-A-18 Hornet in the U.S. Navy, and the F-A-18 in the U.S. Marine Corps. The airframe that is on display at the MAPS Air Museum is McDonnell Douglas F-4S Phantom II. In developing the histories of the aircraft located at the MAPS Air Museum, all available resources are researched and compiled. While most of the source materials are in agreement, some of the information obtained from various sources is inconsistent with the majority of the other data. If this is the case, the information that is presented represents the facts as presented by official sources whenever possible. The Phantom II that is displayed at the MAPS Air Museum was constructed in 1968 as an F-4J with manufacturer's serial number 2980 at McDonnell Douglas Aircraft, St. Louis, Missouri. It was officially accepted by the United States Navy on July 29, 1968 with bureau number 155764. The first assignment for this airframe was with Fighter Squadron or VF-21 stationed at Naval Air Station or NAS Miramar, California. During this assignment, it was deployed twice aboard USS Ranger with Carrier Air Wing 2 to the Western Pacific or Westpac Vietnam area of operations. The first deployment was from October 26, 1968 to May 17, 1969. The second deployment lasted from October 14, 1969 to June 1, 1970. In June of 1970, 155764 was reassigned to VF-142 as aircraft NK-205, which was also home-based at the Naval Air Station in Miramar, California. During this assignment, it was deployed aboard USS Enterprise with Carrier Air Wing 14 to the Westpac Vietnam Indian Ocean Area of Operations. This deployment lasted from June 11, 1971 to February 12, 1972. On October 27, 1971, the aircraft moved to the Fleet Air West Pacific Repair Facility in Atsugi, Japan. Upon completion of repairs, the Phantom was assigned to VF-213 and returned to NAS Miramar on July 20, 1972. On March 22, 1973, 155-764 was assigned to VF-121, the Pacific Fleet Replacement Air Group, also at Miramar. On December 18, 1974, the aircraft was again assigned to VF-213. During this assignment, 155764 deployed again to the Western Pacific Vietnam Indian Ocean Area of Operations, this time aboard the USS Kitty Hawk with Carrier Air Wing 11. This deployment lasted from May 21, 1975 to December 15, 1975. On December 21, 1975, the Phantom was transferred to the United States Marine Corps and assigned to Marine Fighter Attack Squadron, or VMFA-122, then stationed at Beaufort, South Carolina. On January 6, 1976, the aircraft was reassigned to VMFA-251, also at MCAS Beaufort. During this assignment, VMFA-251 deployed to Rota, Spain in support of NATO forces. Returned to the Navy on March 21, 1977, the aircraft became part of VF-103, stationed at the Naval Air Station in Oceana, Virginia, as aircraft AC-205. On July 11, 1977, 
it was deployed aboard USS Saratoga with Carrier Air Wing 3 to the Mediterranean. That deployment ended on December 23, 1977. On July 28, 1978, VF-103 was relocated to Marine Corps Air Station Cherry Point, North Carolina. On October 28, 1978, VF-103 was again deployed aboard the USS Saratoga to the Mediterranean with Carrier Air Wing 3. The deployment ended on April 5, 1979. On November 11, 1979, 155-764 was assigned to VF-74 as aircraft AA-201 located at the Naval Air Station, Oceana, Virginia. On November 27, 1979, VF-74 was deployed aboard USS Forrestal with Carrier Air Wing 17 to the Mediterranean. The deployment ended on May 7, 1980. On September 3, 1982, the aircraft was moved to the Naval Aircraft Rework Refit Facility at MCAS Cherry Point. It was there that the F-4J was upgraded to an F-4S. Upon return to service on June 29, 1983, the F-4S returned to the United States Marine Corps as aircraft DR-14 and duty with VMFA-251, as located at the Marine Corps Air Station, Beaufort, South Carolina. During this assignment, it was deployed to MCAS Cherry Point, North Carolina, Trondheim, Norway, and Nellis Air Force Base in Nevada. On November 12, 1985, 155-764 was assigned to VMFA-333 located at NAS Cherry Point, North Carolina. The squadron moved between Beaufort, South Carolina and Cherry Point, North Carolina. June 30, 1986, saw the aircraft assigned to VMFA-312, located at NAS Oceana, and then relocated to MCAS Beaufort, North Carolina, on July 4, 1986. In July of 1987, VMFA-312 retired its F-4 aircraft and transitioned to the FA-18A Hornet. At that time, 155764 was assigned to VMFA-235. In November of 1989, VMFA-235 also transitioned to the FA-18 Hornet, and the aircraft was relocated to MCAS Cherry Point, North Carolina. On April 22, 1989, the aircraft was withdrawn from service at MCAS Cherry Point, North Carolina. It was scheduled to become part of the Navy drone program. When that program was canceled on January 21, 2003, the airframe was then struck off charge with the Navy and scheduled to be decommissioned and either shredded or used for target practice. On November 10, 2003, a team from MAPS started the recovery of the McDonnell Douglas F-4S Phantom II with Bureau Number 155764 from the Cherry Point Marine Corps Air Station. It was disassembled and arrived at the MAPS Air Museum on November 18, 2003. Upon reassembly, the aircraft was placed on display with the paint scheme of Marine Fighter Attack Squadron 235. In November of 2017, the aircraft was once again repainted. During the summer months of 2021, the aircraft was again repainted, this time to represent the aircraft as it was when assigned to Navy Fighter Squadron 21, while assigned to the USS Ranger in 1970. The F-4 was dedicated on November 13, 2021. The name depicted on the front cockpit is a tribute to Lieutenant Leonard John Shepner. A lifetime resident of Canton, Ohio, he graduated from Central Catholic High School in Canton 
and attended The Ohio State University on a Navy ROTC scholarship. He earned his degree in engineering in 1966 and was commissioned a naval officer. Flight training followed graduation and he earned his naval aviator's wings in 1968. Upon completion of advanced pilot training at NAS Chase Field in Texas, he reported to Navy Fighter Squadron or VF-21 then stationed at Naval Air Station Miramar, California. The squadron deployed twice with Carrier Air Wing 2 to the Western Pacific aboard the aircraft carrier USS Ranger. The first deployment was from October 26, 1968 to May 17, 1969. The second deployment started on October 14, 1969. On March 9, 1970, Lieutenant Schopner was assigned a photo reconnaissance escort mission in an F-4J Phantom, Bureau Number 155775. Schopner was the aircraft pilot and Lieutenant Junior Grade Rex Lewis Parcells Jr. of Berkeley, California, who had flown a number of previous missions with Schopner, served as the radar intercept officer on the flight. Launch took place at 1200 hours on that day. Their climb out and aerial refueling were normal. Because of low ceilings and poor visibility in the target area, the escort mission was canceled. Schepner's aircraft was diverted to a secondary mission as combat air patrol for the task force. The reassignment occurred about one hour after their takeoff. Upon return, the pilot reported his position as overhead of the Ranger at 17,000 feet. He was instructed to rendezvous with another aircraft. It was at this point that radio communications was lost. Radar contact between the aircraft and the carrier search radar was lost at 1300 hours. A preliminary search was conducted using aircraft already airborne in the vicinity of the carrier. With no success on this preliminary search, the assistance of other assets was utilized, including seven surface ships, seven helicopters, and 15 fixed-wing aircraft. Ultimately, the search was discontinued, and Schepner and Parcells were listed as missing. Their names are memorialized in the courts of the missing at the Honolulu Memorial. Three days before, on March 6, 1970, Schopner and Parcells had flown another mission from the deck of the USS Ranger. This mission was flown in F-4J Bureau Number 155764, the Phantom II that is on display at the MAPS Air Museum. The aircraft on display at MAPS is McDonnell Douglas F-4S, carrying the bureau number 155764. The aircraft is painted and marked as an F-4J assigned to Navy Fighter Squadron 21 aboard the USS Ranger in 1970. F-4S bureau number 155764 is on loan for the National Naval Aviation Museum in Pensacola, Florida. <laughs>